There are two different types of plant cell walls. The first is primary cell walls. These are made of a uh, uh, polysaccharide called cellulose. It's a polymer of sugar molecules, basically. Um, it's the same thing that paper is made of, considering paper is made from cell walls. Um, and these are secreted immediately after the cells divide. And they stain green um, with a fast green. Next, we have secondary cell walls, and this is the main type of cell walls found in wood cells. And these are laid down over the primary cell walls later in the development of the cell. And because they're found in wood cells, they are the primary things that give plants strength, uh, mechanical strength. And to do that, they contain different polymers, um, including lignin and suberin, et cetera. And this is what, like I said, imparts that strength on the secondary cell walls. And these will stain red with that saffronin. So we can see in this thelocactus section here, both types of cell walls. Primary cell walls here are thin, um, they stain green, and uh, just kind of the, the standard plant cell wall. Um, and then next we have these secondary cell walls here, but the secondary cell walls at this point don't form an even covering over the cell. They start out in different patterns, in this case, a helical pattern. So you can see that the secondary cell wall is starting to form um, as these little um, helical thickenings around the um, outside of each cell. Eventually, um, in some cells, these thickenings will grow together to form a cell wall that evenly covers the entire, or a secondary cell wall, that evenly covers the entire outside of the cell. Uh, sometimes, it's, using a lot of cacti where a lot of mechanical strength isn't required, these secondary cell walls will kind of stay in this sort of state. So we've talked a lot about cells, we've talked about cell walls, but where do all these tissues originate? The answer is, is that they come from meristems. Unlike animals, which kind of grow evenly, um, their whole body grows at an even rate, plant growth occurs at discrete points called meristems. These can be identified in um, anatomical um, sections as areas of small, dense cells. And there are three main types of meristems that we're going to talk about. First are apical meristems, and these um, cause upward growth from the very top or apex of the plant body. Next, we have lateral meristems, and these cause an increase in um, outward growth or girth of the plant body. And then finally, we have intercalary meristems, which cause upward growth from the bottom of the structure. So they're kind of the opposite of an apical meristem. And we'll look at examples of all these here. So we'll start off with a Weingardia rauschii. It's kind of painful to not call that a sulcurobutia, but everybody's probably seen the top of their plant before and wondered uh, what, what is happening there, um, where that plant is growing from. So, in order to examine that more closely, we'll need to take what is called a longitudinal section, abbreviated LS. And that is a section parallel to the long axis of the specimen. Um, and so when we get that mounted up in the microtome, we've got our little Weingardia head, there's the apex that we're after. Uh, and here we are about to take a longitudinal section of that tissue. And when we take that tissue, when we take that section, this is what we get. This is a beautiful section here. Uh, we can see this little dome of dense, quickly dividing cells at the very, very top of that stem. We're gonna call him Sam for the shoot apical meristem. Um, that is where the entire shoot is growing from. If something happens to that shoot apical meristem, there are little versions of that and all the axillary buds are the um, are mer are little, um, areas of meristematic tissue down the sides of the stem. So you can see here on this Chermiocerus, we've cut off the top. It no longer has a shoot apical meristem and it's branching then from all the side buds. And we get now a bunch of shoot apical meristems on each of these branches. We'll talk a little bit more about axillary buds later. But for now, look at lateral meristems here. We're back to our Echinopsis stem. Um, and these lateral meristems occur actually within the vascular bundles. 
in the, this ring in the center of the stem. And this is the part that makes grafting work. So here we are um, back to our slide um, of that stem. And you can see actually a tear where that lateral meristem would be. That's because in a lot of stem sections, we've got hard, harder tissues, softer tissues. Um, so during sectioning, those small, dense, quickly dividing cells are actually the weakest point. So if that's where a section is going to tear, or, or that, that's where it's going to tear. So you can pretend that there are some little dense cells. Um, and they produce more vascular tissue to the inside and the outside, which causes an increase in the girth of the stem. Um, so now we'll talk about intercalary meristems. The best example of them in cacti is in the spines. So here we can see a cactus spine, a young cactus spine here. And there's an intercalary meristem in the bottom, creating cells towards the outside that is causing this spine to elongate from the base. You can see this freshly um, grown living part of the spine at the bottom. And that is because this meristem down at the base is adding more tissue from the bottom. So here we can see in a longitudinal section of a similar spine, this area of dense, quickly dividing cells at the bottom that is causing this spine to elongate upwards. Mm -hmm.